we'll be we'll be through with this book and it, this is much of this is self-explanatory through the rest of the chapter but we want to begin in, in Revelation chapter, I'm sorry, I think I said 21, Revelation chapter number 20, and uh, talk tonight a little bit about down through verse number 15, and then uh, that's probably as far as we'll get tonight, so it's not going to take me very long. We have, it, up until this point, we have understood that, uh, you know, about the, the seven churches, uh, we've understood about the rapture of the church being in, there in the end of chapter number 3. Uh, speaking of the rapture of the church, we have learned about the, the big part of, of all of this up until this point, from chapter number 3 up until here, has been dealing with the, uh, with the uh, tribulation period and the thousand-year millennial reign. Now, last week we talked some about the, about the thousand-year millennial reign and how that through all of the 1,000 years, the devil is bound in, in the bottomless pit. And he is bound and cannot be loosed. But he's, remember, he's still the devil. And there's nothing that's ever going to change who the devil is because he is always going to be the devil. And he is always going to exist. Now, his final existence will be in that lake of fire where he'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. But the devil has always been, and he will always be in existence. And he, as long as he's allowed upon this earth, he is going to do what he can to discourage and destroy the people of God. Uh, he thought he could overthrow God himself, and that's what put him in the position that he is in now. Uh, where is the devil? He, you know, what does he rule? He rules the, uh, the, the principal, the power of the air about us. That is his kingdom. Uh, that's, he was cast out of heaven, and that has become his kingdom. And we'll see how all that's going to be destroyed uh, later on, maybe part of tonight, but we'll see how all that's going to be uh, destroyed. But as, <clears throat> as we think about these things, up until now, we've come uh, now to the end of the, of the millennial reign. What happens at the end of the millennial reign? The devil is let loose out of the bottomless pit for a short season. Now, people have, that have grown up upon the earth have grown up in a perfect environment. They have been grown, you know, they have grown up in a life where Christ is ruling and where Christ is reigning. Uh, where sin, if it is, you know, being that man is, has, has grown up in this environment, sin, that, that if it is thought up in the, in the heart of man, is not, is not tolerated. That's the best way I know how to explain that. It just isn't tolerated. And those... Millions, I'll, I will say in a thousand years, millions of, of people will be born upon this earth. And they will have an opportunity to follow Christ in his kingdom or they can follow them on selves. Now the, remember, the devil is bound. And the devil the, ha, will have no influence in that day. But man in, in that setting, the Bible says man's heart is, is, is deceitfully wicked. And, and the Bible tells us that, that man in his own self cannot do anything to get to God. Now, man will have the choice during the millennial reign. They will follow Christ or they will follow them own selves in their own, you know, uh, their own bed. They'll follow what they think in their heart is right to do. Now, at the end of that day, at the end of the millennial reign, we read about that. In verse number five, and when the thousand verse number seven, I'm sorry, of chapter twenty, and when the thousand years are expired, after a thousand years of the millennial reign of Christ upon this earth, where we come back and rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years, and after all of that has taken place, man has been raised up in a perfect environment, uh, without you know, without the influence of the devil, and been raised up in a perfect environment. Uh, Satan, verse 7, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, the bottomless pit where he has been for a thousand years. Remember, he didn't, nothing changed about the devil in those thousand years. He's still the devil. And he is going to come, God's going to let him out. Now, why would God do that? And I believe it's for once and all to settle the, uh, settle the fact that man is not capable of righteousness within themselves. That the only way man can be righteous is to be right with God. And so 
uh, folks that have not followed Christ during the millennial reign, that have followed their own selves, their own way of thinking, their own, uh, you know, their own logical feelings and all of that, those that have, have, have followed, took that course of action in their life rather than following, following Christ, here's what's going to happen. The devil being led out of prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four uh, quarters of the earth. In other words, the whole earth. The devil will go about to deceive them. What is the devil? He is a master deceiver. He is, he is a master at deception. And the Bible says this, this next thing that happens in Scripture here is the battle of Gog and Magog. Uh, goes about to the uh, four corners of the earth. Gog and Magog could gather them together to battle, the, to battle the number of whom is of the sands of the sea. An innumerable amount of people are going to gather together to battle. Now, it's been the millennial reign of Christ. It's been a thousand years of perfection upon this earth. It's been a thousand years where the curse has been lifted from this earth, and there's, there's no curse upon the earth. <coughs> where sin has not been tolerated. And so after a thousand years, there's still going to be the devil that's going to come out and people that are going to follow the devil and believe that they can overcome the Lord and believe that they can battle against God himself and win against God. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and could pass the camp of the saints about that beloved city of Jerusalem and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. They're going to come against God and God with one voice is going to speak fire from heaven and is going to devour that crowd. And there's not going to be a shooting war. There's not going to be military strikes and all of that. They're going to gather against God and God once and for all is going to settle the fact that who is God? He's God. And, he, and that's what's going to happen at the battle of Gog and Magog. And he's going to call fire down from heaven and it's going to consume those. Now, what's the next thing that happened? And verse number 10. And the devil that, had, that deceived them, the devil that deceived those that rose up against God through not only that battle, but through all the history of mankind, the devil has been the master deceiver. And that devil that deceived them and is deceiving men today, I'm glad, friend, that I'm not deceased. Amen? I'm glad that I'm not being deceived, but I've heard the truth, I've believed the truth, and I've been saved by the grace of God because if the devil had his way, I would be living in deception. I would be deceived and be living, uh, you know, maybe thinking I was all right, maybe thinking because that's what the devil used. He uses your mind. And if he can cause people to believe that they're good enough to get to heaven and they live their lives and die, they'll die without God. They'll die in deception, being deceived. And so the devil that deceived them, what happens to him? He was cast into the lake of fire. He just spent a thousand years in the millennial, you know, in the millennial. He spent a thousand years in the bottomless pit during the millennial. And so now the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And who's he got there for his friends? The beast and the false prophet, the Antichrist. They're gonna be they're gonna be there waiting on him. And the Bible says that they, those, shall be tormented day and night forever and forever. Friend, that's a horrible thought. Now, for the devil, that's not a horrible thought. Amen. I, I say, you know, I say give us a chance and let us give him a push. Amen. For all the deception and all the, the, the terror and the heartache that he's caused uh, to, to human beings, I say let us give him a push. But you think of that, that he's not going to be without company in the lake of fire. And they'll be, well, let's read on. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great. Now, it's talking about the great white throne of judgment. And the Bible says, and I saw the dead small and great stand before God. So all the dead that, are, that died without faith in God, all the dead from, uh, from the time of Adam on, all the dead, both small and great, the pauper on the street, the rich man in the palace, 
In that day, they're all made equal as they stand on level ground at the great white throne of judgment. The man with all the money, when he stands at the great white throne of judgment, cannot say, well, I've got all the money that a man could ever have. I'll give it all to you if you'll let me get into heaven. That man will stand before God, and he will stand before him and say, depart from me, you that work iniquity, I never knew you. So, friend, money is not going to get a man past God at the great white throne of judgment. And the person that was, that was poor, that neglected God and neglected to come to know the Lord, as he stands before God, he said, well, I'm just a poor man. But he had the opportunity to be saved. God's going to say to him, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. Friend, it's not by my righteousness that I'm going to get to go to heaven. It's not by my wealth or my riches that I'm going to go get to heaven because I don't have that. But it's by the grace and mercy, hallelujah, of a holy God in heaven that sent his son to die for me on the cross of Calvary that I might be saved. That's how I'm going to get in. This great white throne of judgment, God's people do not have to stand at. This is for those that have died without faith in him, without trust in Christ. So they'll stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. So they'll be standing there, every man given account in that day for the works that he's done as a, as a man. And so if, if, a, if a man stood there before God Almighty at the great white throne of judgment, and he said to God, Lord, I, I, I went to church every Sunday, I paid my tithes every Sunday. God, I didn't hurt anybody. I did all, you know, I did all that I could do in myself to do right in that world. But God is going to say to him, depart from me, you that work iniquity. I never knew you. Why? Because salvation is by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, not of works. And there'll be millions that'll stand at the great white throne of judgment and they'll stand there with their good works in their hands. No matter how good they are, but they'll stand there. And it'll be revealed all the good works that they did, but they did not come through the blood of Jesus. And friend, they can't get there by their works and they'll be, they'll be lost forever and ever and doomed to eternity in the lake of fire. That's sad, isn't it? But there'll be millions that'll stand at the great white throne. It, it's, it's not God's fault, friend. It's not God's fault. It's their own fault that they reject the Lord and they don't come to know Him. So we see that the books were open and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. The Bible says the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. According to the works. Every, God leaves nobody out. Everybody that was, that was born on this, on this planet that died without faith is one day going to stand before God. Now I've had people ask me the question, what about those folks that have been cremated and their ashes have been thrown in the sea? It doesn't matter. God knows where every molecule of man is. Now, you say, preacher, now that's ridiculous that, that God could do it. No, it's not. You got to believe God. You got to believe the Word of God. If God's able to create man out of the dust of the earth, surely God can resurrect man out of the dust of, out of that dust. So God knows where everybody's at. So that's not a you know that's not a valid argument. So don't come to me with those those things. And people have tried to uh, trip me up with such questions. Well, what's God going to do about that? Well, first of all, the arrogance of people like that they're on dangerous ground when they question God and what God can do. So I don't understand all that, but I believe it because the Bible tells me that all the dead, both small and great, the sea will give up their dead, death and hell will give up their dead, and so there are ever, ever person, nobody's going to escape standing before the great white throne of judgment, and they'll be judged according to their works. Now you and I will stand at the judgment seat of Christ. We'll be judged according to our works that we did for the Lord. Saved by the grace of God, we'll be judged and rewarded for the things we do for the Lord. But they'll be judged, <clears throat> and their just reward, because of their unbelief, and it saddens me to say, will be to spend eternity in the lake of fire. 
And someone also asked me about degrees. Now, you'll get all kinds of answers <clears throat> when you ask the question. But is there <coughs> degrees of punishment in hell? Now, remember, God is a just and holy and righteous God. And other than to tell you this, that those that, if, if I live, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out how to say this and you get the gist of what I'm saying. I'm living in Mars Hill community. And I've attended Gables Creek Baptist Church where the gospel has been proclaimed in the proper manner for over 150 years. And I sat there and I've listened to the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've sat back there on that pew and I've listened to that message preached over and over to me. And I've rejected God. I'll tell you something. I don't want to have the punishment in hell that I believe that person will have because they have rejected and rejected and rejected the word of God. I believe their punishment will be severe for all eternity. Now... What about that one that maybe, you know, maybe they heard the gospel one time. And maybe out of ignorance, you know, out of their ignorance, they, you know, they had the opportunity, but they didn't know what to do with the opportunity. And they didn't hear it over and over and over as some people do. Do you believe that their, their punishment in hell will be as great as that one that rejected and rejected and rejected the gospel? I believe there'll be a difference. And you you know, but but to say that is also to say this, I don't want to go to hell whether whether I have a small degree or whether I have a large degree of punishment, I don't want to go to hell. And I'm not going because for for the one that had if 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 I'm wrong, but if I'm right, if those that have the smallest degree of punishment in hell, they'll still spend eternity in the lake of fire. And, you know, you've heard people say, well, it's going to be hotter for that person than it is the other. Now, I don't know about all of that. But I know the duration of hell is for eternity and her eternity. Some people go to the point of saying, well, those folks will just die and it'll all be over with in a moment of time. No, it, the Bible te tells me that they'll be cast into the lake of fire and they'll be there for, for eternity and all of eternity. So the question is not whether there is degrees of hell you know, the degrees of punishment in hell. But the question is, does anybody want to go to hell? Nobody wants to go to hell because the least amount of punishment, if there are degrees, God does that, then I don't want to go to hell to suffer the least because the suffering of the least in hell will be such torment that, you know, that, that they'll be crying for all eternity to get out and they'll never be to get out. Now think about it. now. There, you know, I believe I believe in a literal hell. By the way, I believe in a literal fire. I believe I take the Bible literally when it speaks of of a lake of fire, of fire and brimstone. I take the Bible literally when it talks about uh, you know the wailing and gnashing of teeth. I take all of that as what the Bible says. Now there was a prominent preacher in this area uh, that one time posted in the newspaper that that they were not sure if hell was a literal fire or it was just a burning desire for God that would never be quenched. Now, I had that article, kept it for years. I, I could go back to archive it and find it, I guess. But I read that with my own eyes, and I thought, man, that's, that's deceptive because the Bible tells me that hell is real. And the Bible teaches me that it's a real place and that it's a real place for real people. And friend, I'm glad that I'm not going to go there. I believe in the literal hell. I believe in the in that place where man will be punished uh, forever and ever. And so, what what you know? What do you do? You try to get people to see where they're going if they leave this life unprepared without God. I've still got the man on my mind at work, and I don't know how to reach him. I don't know how to. He's a hard nut to crack, and it's hard to get a, a, a good straight answer, a good conversation out of him. But if he's telling me the truth about his soul, if he's telling me the truth about he knows where he's going when he dies, 
if he's telling me the truth about that friend and, and, and that's really right, then he's going to die and go to hell without God and he don't realize what he what he's really says he's going to do. Do you think if people knew that if they went down, uh, you know, down the road down here and crawl, to cross a bridge and that bridge had been washed out and there was rushing water and they were, you know, they would drive into that rushing water and perish. Do you think that they would really do that if they thought that really to be so? You think they'd just keep on going? No, they'd stop. If you were, if you were one there and you were telling, would you tell people that there was the bridge was out and you need to stop or you're going to run off the, off the uh, bank into the creek? Would you stop and tell them that? Sure you would. You wouldn't want anybody to run a, listen, it should be the same way with lost people. We, God said he wasn't willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Therefore, my friend, we should be willing to bear the gospel message when God gives us opportunity. And if we pray for the opportunity, God will give us opportunity. I'm still praying for the right opportunity to talk to this fellow at work. And, and really try to get down if he said what he meant or meant what he said when I talked to him the first time. So what happens? And whosoever... Uh, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. That is the final doom of mankind as far as those that have not faith in Christ. This is the second death. The second death and the final death is this death right here. Never death will, will man see ever again after this second death. Now, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And what a horrible thought. You've probably got maybe family that, that's going to do exactly what I preached to you about tonight if someone don't reach them for the Lord. <coughs> you may have friends that if someone doesn't reach them, they're going to die and go to hell without God. They're going to, they're going to be a part of this second death and never to live again. Don't believe this business about reincarnation. Don't, don't believe none of that junk that has that tried to be passed around in the world. today. when man dies, he's gone. For eternity, he's going to be somewhere. Now, this is all taking place. This is the final end. The judgments are done with. This is the final end. The millennial is over with. This is the final. But what has to take place next? There has to be a purifying of the earth. And I'll touch on this just a little bit. And you think on it. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husbands. Here, after the millennial reign, is where we see the purification of the heavens and the earth. And I'll go back next week. I'll pick up some scripture in the book of Peter, or the next time, maybe Wednesday. No, Wednesday's not busy, but probably won't. But next time we take off here, I'll pick up some scripture out of... Uh, uh, out of uh, the book of Peter and, and show you where the, the elements are going, to, uh, are going to explode in a fiery blast is, is about what's going to happen. And, and if you study what the atmospheric heaven around us is made of and if you'll study what the earth is made of and what is just a few miles under our feet, if you start studying that thing, you'll wonder how in the world this world holds together as it is. Now you wonder, you know, we see once in a while the, 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 the and scientists know this, and the center of the earth is, and it's not far down, the center of the earth is a molten mass of, of burning matter, lava. And sometimes the pressure in the earth will get so great from all the, you know, from all the, the burning and, the, the, and, and everything, the pressure will get so great that it will erupt from the center of the earth in the form of a volcano. And that's what produces the volcano. These hot springs where the water is continuously hot, you know what heats those? The center of the earth's heat, the under the crust of the earth. That is close enough to the ground to heat the springs of water that are under there. That's what causes the hot springs. Now, friend, I'm telling you, you begin to look and study on that. Just study that. And you see what this earth is made of. And when the Bible says that the first heaven and the first earth are passed away, that's exactly what it means. This earth is going to be cleansed with fire. God's going to have to create a new heaven and a new earth because the first heaven and the first earth are gone. 
this planet you're standing on now, according to what I study in Scripture, is going to disappear. It's going to be gone. Scientists tell us that over the years they have watched uh, planets or Earths, they call them. They have watched planets uh, that have been in existence, you know, since God created them. They watched them burn up and go away. Not there any longer. Can't see them anymore because what happened? They burn up and went away. Now what's going to happen to the, to the earth? It's going to be cleansed with fire. It's going to burn up and go away and there'll be a new heaven, a new earth. We might talk a little bit on the science of that uh, the next time. But it's very interesting to see what's going to happen. But what's more interesting is to see what God's going to create for us through all eternity. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. Bless it, I pray. God, help us, Lord, to reach those that are lost for thy glory. Lord, that they might not go to hell. Lord, help, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.